Hello everyone. Here we would like to discuss the continuation of the Newton law of gravitation that we are talking in the previous lectures. We know according to Newton law of gravitation, the gravitational force of attraction between any two bodies is directly proportional to their masses and inversely product of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance of separation. Let us consider three particles at the three corners of an equilateral triangle. Let us assume that three particles for the simplicity are having identical masses. Being an equilateral triangle, this distance is also equal to same. Now, for example, we have imagined another particle having a mass say for example m dash some mass m dash let its centroid of the triangle a new mass m dash is placed now i would like to know what is the resultant force experienced by that m dash i want to say on this m dash who is placed at the third corner there will be multiple forces acting you know it quite uh, well what are that multiple uh, possible forces are there will be a force due to m this uh, first one what kind of a force it is attractive force like this there will be a force due to the other mass also that is also attractive. Gravitational force is always attractive. And gravitational force due to this one is also attractive. So, these three forces are acting on the same particle simultaneously. And we know according to triangle law of the vectors, the resultant is going to be equal to zero. If you remember the triangle law that if three particles are acting on a point, and that point is in equilibrium that three particles can be represented as the three sides of a triangle now we can uh, easily rearrange them like a triangle say for example if you have taken these three forces uh, by drawing uh, if you assume these three as the three forces these three forces shall be equal in magnitude because all these distances are equal all masses at the three corners are equal and all of them are applying the force of attraction of the same particle that is there at the center. So, we can uh, try to rearrange these uh, forces, uh, something like this. Uh, say, we can redraw this uh, force, say for example, one here, we can just shift that one here. And that, that means, we are just shifting the vector parallelly, shifting a vector parallelly is not going to affect it in any way. This is the third vector that I have shifted parallelly. This is the second vector that I have shifted parallelly. This is the first vector that I have shifted parallelly. And you could have noticed that uh, these three are representing now three sides of a triangle taken in the same order. That means uh, the point is in equilibrium. Therefore, the resultant force acting at the particular particle who is placed at the centroid whatever may be its mass is, its resultant force on it is equal to 0. Now, we want to continue further. Say for example, we want to discuss a kind of a scenario where triangle is there, like the same equilateral triangle, all masses are equal, all sides are also equal, let the side is equal to R. Now, we would like to calculate the resultant force acting on any one mass who is there at any one corner, say for example on this corner. Now, on this particle, the remaining two particles always apply a force of attraction. So, this is one gravitational force of attraction. This is another gravitational force of attraction acting on it. Between them there is certain angle. That angle is nothing but 60 degree because 
the triangle is an equilateral triangle. I would like to say the value of the force here F1 is equal to F2 because the masses are same and the distance between the masses are also equal to same. And according to Newton law of gravitation, that value is nothing but G M1 M2 by R square, but here M1 equal to M2. Now these two forces are equal in magnitude, but they are having such an angular separation. We can find out F resultant using the parallelogram law of vectors as root of F1 square f2 square and 2 f1 f2 cos theta so but anyway in our problem f1 equal to f2 so that will be 2 f square and 2 f square of cos theta we can take 2 f square common and 1 plus cos theta we know that 1 plus cos theta is nothing but equal to 1 plus cos theta is nothing but equal to 2 cos square theta by 2. So, the overall value is square root of 4 f square cos square theta by 2. So, taking the value out of the square root, the value is nothing but equal to f resultant at any corner of the equilateral triangle when identical masses are placed at the corners of the triangle is nothing but equal to 2f cos theta by 2. Now, the value of the theta is nothing but equal to 60 degree. So, the answer is going to be equal to 2f cos 60 by 2. We know 60 by 2 is nothing but equal to cos 30. We know that cos 30 is nothing but equal to sin 60 equal to root 3 by 2. So, the resultant force acting at any one corner is root 3 times of the force, where the value of the force is identified already as gm square by r square. Like that, while we are solving the problems, resultant forces, whatever may be the basic concept is, we shall always use the parallelogram law of vectors. Thank you and your feedback is most welcome.